Well, good man, I'm morning to you. I wanted to share with you real quick my experience with this weekend's Mad Ops Gun Run. If you don't know me, my name is Modern Mountain Man. You may have met me at the competition. My name is Alvin. Um, I just wanted to share real quick just some of the things I experienced this weekend. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, gun runs or running guns, I'm going to use the terms interchangeably. I don't know which one is the proper term. So for those of you running gun or gun run vets, you guys explain it to me in the comments below which one is the proper term because I feel like I've heard both of them used. But if you're not familiar with uh, running gun competitions, basically you think like a 5K mud run with firearms. So it's a biathlon. You're running a 5K through the woods. There'll be obstacles, various things like that. Then you'll come to shooting stations and you'll shoot competitively at those various stations. So in this video, you'll have some uh, pre and post race vlogs. You'll have some racing footage. And at the end, I'm gonna come back and share some of my thoughts, some things that I learned both uh, about the race as well as some uh, just some reviews, some things I learned about the equipment that I used. Coming up on Modern Mountain Man. All right, so two things I've never done before. Well, there's a lot of things I've never done before, but two things uh, that I'm gonna talk about right now. One, I have never uh, shot competitively. And two, I've never run in a competitive race, like other than like sprinting and football practice, but like like 5Ks, that sort of deal. And tonight, I'm gonna do both at the same time. I'm going to this thing, it's called a gun run. And basically, um, think, a 5k mud run plus guns uh, there'll be pistol shooting stations and rifle shooting stations um, this one tonight is a uh, is a 4k it's not a 5k but it's at night like my run starts at 9 p.m um, it's a white light competition they had a they had a, uh, a night vision uh, competition last night for the guys who run night vision tonight's just white light so i'll be running around with headlamp on and uh, lights on my rifle and all that good stuff but I'm um, super excited for tonight. Like I said, um, not only is this my first time shooting competitively and running competitively, it's my first time doing both at the same time. And not only am I running a gun run for the very first time, I'm doing it in the dark <laughs> at nine o'clock at night. And um, so I, I have been wanting to do one of these for quite a while and just things would come up, different stuff. And so, you know, we're, we're now at a place where I was able to go to one and I was gonna sign up for this race and the ticket sold out like immediately. So I was all right, well, I'll just have to wait until fall or whenever the next one is. A guy, a guy from the gun run group uh, emailed me and said, hey, a ticket just opened up. Um, and so I had like a week to get ready or a week and a half to get ready, I think. And so I'm just hustling around, uh, getting white lights for my rifle. I had to get a, um, a new uh, sight installed on my handgun. So I've got these cool Mepro light uh, tritium sights now, which would be perfect for this. So a couple of things uh, I have not run in forever. When I thought I was not coming to this, I switched to all my training. I was doing all weightlifting, no running at all. So um, I should have a real fun time running uh, a 4K. And then I have not been shooting handguns that often lately just because of the ammo crunch. I was uh, out of everything I'd stockpiled. My nine millimeter was the lowest. And so I I'm, I'm, went to the range, ran some rounds through the, uh, the Jericho uh, yesterday and I could tell I was rusty. So um, rusty on my handgunning, rusty on my running. So I'm not trying to sandbag right now and I'm not trying to make excuses in advance. I'm just saying, this is my first race, and um, so I'm sort of setting a baseline for myself in this race. And so hopefully um, my baseline, because I haven't run in forever and haven't shot handgun in forever, um, next time I run this race, I'll be in better shape and I'll have shot handgun more often. My baseline, I'll like blow my baseline out of the water. So my main goals for this weekend are, are this. One, to be safe. Um, no need getting injured uh, either <laughs> through running injury or through uh, you know firearm injury. So number one, be safe. Uh, number two, don't get disqualified. I, I hate to uh, run a good race, shoot some good shots, and just do something dumb and get DQ'd. So be safe, don't get DQ'd. And um, because it's my first race, I don't have like really high aspirations of winning the whole thing. Um, but my one goal is don't come in last. All right, so. Um, I'll hit you guys back in a minute. All right, made it here to the gun run. You are in my tent. Um, let me show you real quick what we're running in this race. 
All right, tonight I'm gonna to be running uh, standard AR here, DPMS. Got Crimson Trace light on the front of it here. Just just picked this up yesterday, installed it this morning. So we talked about really testing gear out. Like I'm literally testing this out for the first time during this race. Over here, you've got a Meprolite Foresight and one of their multipliers. Um, this one, uh, I'm gonna be doing a, a more extensive review of this one soon. But this one here, um, part of running in this race is part of my overall review of it. But this is, uh, basically it's it's a red dot, but it's like a little computer on board, man. It, it, it does so many cool things on here. So I'm gonna give it a good, good run on this multiplier for those longer range shots. Over here on my my vest, so my, my little tactical vest here is not the coolest one in the world, so y'all gonna have to help me get cool later on, but it's, it's functional, it's good, it's all I need for tonight. On my belt here, I've got my Phobos holster, I've got my, my Jericho um, 941. Um, my, my sights, I'm also gonna be doing a review on these soon. Got three, three mags in the pouch today with rounds we just rolled this week. Rocking some uh, some Varmageddon uh, nozzler bullets here, not because I'm varmint hunting on this one, but because they were cheap, available, and my barrel likes them. Up here in these mag pouches, we've got more ammo for the Jericho. Uh, running a bunch of Winchester white box ball stuff. Got all, all these uh, Metgar mags that my, my Jericho loves. Got knives, got flashlights, got ear pro, got extra ear pro, got my eye pro. We're ready to go. Um, like I said, just got here, set up my tent, met some really cool people, ready to run this race. See ya. Full disclosure, the video you're about to see is not my footage and it's not me being filmed. Uh, I didn't have a means of videoing myself during the race and I hit up Ellis from uh, the gun run and just asked him for some footage and he just shot me some of his footage. So watch this and I'll give you an idea of what we did. Well guys, just an update on how things went with the running gun. Um, I, I met all three of my goals. I, I stayed safe. Um, I didn't get DQ'd. <laughs> and I also, um, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't come in last. I, I'm not sh totally sure yet, because they still have some tabulating to do on, on some of the uh, shooting scores. Um, but I know definitely as far as running time, uh, I, I didn't come in last. So uh, a few things I learned, I'll tell you right off the bat. One was I, um, I, need, I need more handgun work. As, as I mentioned before, I was supposed I would need more handgun work. Um, I ran, ran through uh, 69 rounds on that course out of a course, I believe that was a minimum of 30. 
Uh, so it definitely need more work. Um, there was one of the uh, courses of fire that I did not complete um, because it was one where you climb up on a berm and you, you kneel down real low and you have to stay low and engage targets like there were three bad guys. And um, my, my brake on my rifle was kicking up so much dust I couldn't see through my reticle in time to make accurate, clean shots. Uh, so I did not complete that one in time. Um, so yeah, two things, I need, I need to work on my pistol work and next time I need to either clear the berm with my brake or not use a brake, you use a, you know, um, either a suppressor or um, you know, so, something of that nature that's not gonna kick up as much, as much dust. But I had a good time, like I said, first race ever. Uh, first time competing in a gun contest or a race. I did both of them at the same time in the dark. Uh, so I'm, like I said, I, I got, I've got a ways to go, but proud of myself, went well, stayed safe. Thank you guys for all your uh, thoughts and prayers and well wishes and all the things you sent my way. Um, now I'm just gonna chill out, hang out with some of my new friends, and then uh, kick it and go, go to bed. I hope you, you got a little bit of the experience there. Just some closing thoughts here. One, uh, I had a lot of you guys ask me how I did in the race. Um, you know, I, I met all three of my goals, right? I, I didn't get DQ'd, I stayed safe the whole way through, and I didn't come in last. I did better uh, running than I did shooting. As I expected, uh, my, my handgun was definitely uh, my, my handicap that I need to work on more. But uh, my, my running, I came in 22nd. Uh, shooting, I came in 37th, and uh, overall I was 34th, and that was, uh, all, all three of those categories were out of 51 uh, competitors. When it comes to the shooting, I feel like I definitely could have ranked a little bit higher because uh, basically uh, if you don't finish a stage of fire, uh, it, you get recorded as a zero. And I, I, I had two did not finish. One uh, was the, the one I, I'm going to describe in a moment with the, the rifle. Basically, uh, I, I just couldn't see the targets because of the dust and the berm. Uh, but I'll get to that in a moment. The other uh, course of fire that I did not finish, I actually ran out of ammo before I ran out of time, and then I ran out of time really quickly after I ran out of ammo. So two things that could have been there was either carry more ammo or be more efficient with my handgun ammo. Talk really quick about a few things that I learned about my the race and my equipment. Once so I'm running run this uh, this break right here, uh, that man was kicking up some major dust uh, on the one uh, course of fire. We had to climb up a berm and kind of hang low and uh, shoot the enemies uh, beyond the berm. And man, it, uh, there was uh, a lot of dust being kicked up in between the the light and looking through my Meprolite uh, foresight and the multiplier, uh, I just, I couldn't see through it, so I couldn't find my targets. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have either cleared the berm a little bit further with my brake, or maybe even if, I, if I'd if i flipped the multiplier over and just went with a dot, it may not have multiplied the dust quite as bad and would have been a little bit more visible through it. Um, learned that after the fact, talked with the range officer a little bit afterwards, and he uh, gave me a little bit of that, that advice. Also, what I could have done was if I was kicked up dust in one spot, just slid down the berm, moved to another spot, shot. And that was also some advice that the range officer gave me. When I went back and looked at the uh, did not finishes of that uh, the, that particular shooting stage, actually the majority of us did not finish that stage. So I felt a little bit better about myself after that one. Uh, another thing specifically as it relates to um, some things I learned about my Meprolite Foresight, I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth review of this in the future, so stay tuned. Uh, but just for sake of brevity today, this is, you know, uh, not a red dot, it's a green dot. It's green stuff, but it's basically a little computer on board here. It's got all kinds of cool stuff. It's got a round counter. It's got a compass. It's got a leveler. Um, I, I, I didn't really need to use a lot of the little uh, bells and whistles for what I was doing. If the stages of fire had been more rifle rounds, the round counter would have come in handy, but uh, between uh, rifle efficiency and the, la and the lower round counter, uh, the, the round counter wasn't even a, a major factor for me in this race. Uh, one thing, I, I did have this in power save mode, which was cool because I definitely saved power. I, I started the race at 97%, and I believe when I checked at the end of the race, I was just like 96 or 95. So the power save mode was good in that sense. It was bad in another sense. I had it in power save mode, and when I ran from uh, one obstacle 
to another. Um, there was a good amount of time in between when I used my rifle last, and I was doing a shooting transition where I started with my handgun holster and transitioned to, to uh, the rifle. And when I, when I came up and I looked down through there, I realized uh, it had timed out and I had to turn it back on. Uh, so definitely learn power save mode is good for certain things, but not good for everything. And um, this uh, Crimson Trace light, uh, mounted it here. I got a pick rail on top of this gas blocker here. Just mounted it to that. Um, I, I literally put this on the day of the race. So I mean, this was serious testing it during the race. Whereas I had been running these two things for a while now. This was I was running it for the first time. Uh, this particular uh, Crimson Trace came with uh, a couple different mounts. Came with a pick rail mount. It also came with the M lock mount. So technically, I could I could have locked it in here too. I just liked it up here when I, when I tried it out. It also came with a, a pressure pad that I could have put on here. I was in a hurry, so I didn't, I didn't fool with that. But in retrospect, I definitely see where that pressure pad could have come in handy um, in some of the races that we were doing. One of the other things I was testing out was, um, was running, my, running my Jericho. This is a, a IWI Jericho PSL, which means it's the, the, their polymer uh, framed Jericho and it's uh, the, the smaller of the two polymer frames, the PSL is. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, well, one of the things I was really testing out was these, here on, let you see it like this. I was testing out these um, Meprolite um, night sights. It was a night ops race, so I figured, hey, a great opportunity to test out uh, the, these night sights. <laughs> the only thing was, the weapon light that I was gonna use on this didn't arrive in time for the race, so I wasn't running a weapon light. So how I was running this gun was I had my headlamp on and I was using my headlamp while I was shooting, and um, which basically nullified the, 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 night, the night sights here in terms of uh, their tritium glowing and being useful. And so, uh, but you guys may have noticed uh, when I showed this to you before in the vlog part or, or now that the, these, these rear sights look a little bit different than normal. It's like it's not just like the normal little notch back here, but it's got like this little bit of a pick rail right here. You might be wondering, what's that about? One of the cool things about this, uh, this particular setup, I'm going to do another full review on this one too, so come check it out later, is that little pick rail right there is set up for a QD point. For a red dot, a little Meprolite red dot. As you can see, it, it does set higher than a red dot that's that's set down into a cut. But it's it's got this nice advantage of man, you, you can run a red dot. If the red dot fails, you can pull it. Um, this this red dot right here, um, I, I've run it uh, for a while now, and you know there, there are a couple of my holsters that this gun and this red dot fit in. There's a couple of like my conceal holsters that don't have space for that because it. it the retention goes a little bit deeper than this. And so th there's some advantages of being able to take it on, take, take it off. You know, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't run the red dot in the race because one, I wanted to test out the, <laughs> the tritium, which ended up being, being a bit of a fool's errand with my headlamp. But two, uh, with my headlamp, I was worried I was gonna catch a glare off that screen there. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of these sites, even though I didn't, didn't use the, um, didn't use the red dot function on it. Something else that's pretty cool about this rail piece right here, I'm gonna give you guys this look right here. See see how it makes that trench right there? That actually is pretty cool because like, watch as I can't, as I, as I can't the, the handgun back and forth, the, the, the trench of, that, of the inside of that rail piece will actually show you when you can't it too far to the left or to the right. So it's just, just another way of, of being able to see um, whether you're, you're on or off. Yeah, like I said, um, <laughs> any any handgun uh, shooting failures that I had uh, was not the arrow; it was the Indian. Um, and I just need need more practice with this. Like I said, I've had been kind of laying off my handgun uh, practice uh, because of the ammo shortage, but you know, I should still be dry firing and all that good stuff. But um, review coming up on this whole setup pretty soon. And by now, uh, you've probably noticed my uh, This Machine Kills Tyrants t-shirt. This was a t-shirt that I got from the gun run. Um, this is actually some of the merch from the, the guy who organized the race. So I'll drop a link in the description below if, if you want this or any of his other cool uh, offensive type t-shirts, go grab you one. But man, like I said, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about me, learned a lot about racing, learned a lot about the equipment. 
learned a lot. I mean, I've, I've got really some, some minor tweaks on some things that there's nothing like shooting under pressure when you're physically exhausted and in the dark to show you where the cracks are in, in your form and in your style. So looking forward to getting better uh, at shooting, gonna get better at running. I'm gonna start running a little bit more regularly now. I had been in, like in a bulking phase for a little bit there. Uh, I was in another contest where it was a, a, a weight gain muscle contest and so I, I wasn't running at all for a long time. That contest is over, I'm gonna start running. So hopefully this fall I can run another gun run and uh, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not really competing against you guys. I'm competing against me. I'm, I'm my number one competitor. I wanna, I wanna beat my scores. I wanna beat my efficiency in both running and shooting. I wanna get better. You know, and coming home from this, just sharing with my wife uh, some of the skills, some of the things I did. She was like, you know, the, these would be really important things for us to be able to do and to use if uh, you know, if we have have a have a you know scenario where there's a lack of rule of law or something crazy like that um, good to have these kind of skills uh, on on hand uh, and plus it just gives me motivation to stay in shape so all right well like I said I, I'm a total noob to this whole thing learning as I go um, you guys who are experts man I value your advice value your opinions um, but until next time God bless you go take your mountain hey while you're at it Hit that little bell and subscribe.